Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you something new and exciting. Fresh into early access is Ultimate General American Revolution. This is part of the Ultimate General series by Game Labs, the same creators of Ultimate General Civil War, Ultimate General Gettysburg, and they have an Age of Sail or Ultimate Admiral series too, which includes Age of Sail and then Dreadnoughts. But this is their newest game that they're working on. It's not on Steam yet. You can currently only get it from their website, which I'll put the link down below in the description if you're interested and you purchase it through their website and go through their launcher or a launcher that they use. And I do have to put this up front. It's unlikely that you'll be able to get a Steam key by purchasing it from their website. Steam has some new policies in regards to uh, developers giving out keys based on sales that they've already had on the game previously. Um, I don't know all the details. It's best to go join the Discord and read up on it yourself. I'll put a link to that in the description down below too. But I wanted to try this out and just show it on the channel I don't know how much content we'll be able to get through or how many episodes because this is early access. This is, I would even call it early, early access, but it's a very well done game for early access and there's a lot of exciting mechanics that we haven't seen in any of the ult other Ultimate General series or even the Age of Sail series. So, um... I figured I would take you guys along for a ride. Let's dive right on in. And the very first thing, which you'll probably know if you've played Ultimate General Civil War, is you create your general. So there's a lot of dialogue here. Um, to be fair, I feel like they could have maybe got a better voice actor. Um, no disrespect to the person doing this but he doesn't sound very 1700s to me um he kind of just sounds like the uh narrator from some of the total war games which is you know possible um so i was born in a family of successful plantation owner in america what i'm thinking is going to happen here is this is how you choose if you're american or british eventually both factions will be in the game as playable uh, factions, but right now only the Americans and only sort of the first year or maybe even really only like half a year, I think, is in the game. But this is how you choose what what side you're on. Your parents gave you a name, so I don't know. Um, I guess this is supposed to be, you know, part of George Washington's backstory, but, uh, we're not George Washington. We are part of the Quicksilver Gaming family, or I should say the gaming family, and our name is Quicksilver. As the eldest child, I took on much of the responsibility for my younger brothers and sisters. You can see in the top right hand corner, we have our allegiance, so the colonial... I don't want to call them states yet. Uh, it's it's not the United States yet, but I guess you could call it the colonial states. Um, but we we are the colonials, Quicksilver Gaming. And here you have your stats. So intelligence increases the general's line of sight radius and boosts units range attack damage. So fairly important. Well, all these stats are important. Perception boots, boosts the unit's range attack efficiency. So really good. Endurance increases unit efficiency and boosts units cohesion very important charisma boosts units melee attack damage um it's important but i prefer to have an army that shoots more but there there are reasons why you definitely want charisma and then willpower which i think is one of the most important stats boosts units morale regeneration and decreases unit morale damage i think this is the stat you want to put the most emphasis in along with endurance and then probably you know a mishmash of the rest um i i think charisma could be my dump stat but the british they do like to charge that is for sure so 
Here we have different choices. Like I have learned how to keep everyone engaged with different tasks. This gives you plus three perception and intelligence. I made my younger siblings do what I needed. That sounds great. Perception and willpower. And then I always kept a close eye on the younger ones so that nothing happened to them. This is the one I'm choosing because it's intelligence, endurance, and willpower, which are three of the stats I like the most. At the age of 11, I lost my father, and the responsibility for all family affairs passed to me. Plantation management and financial matters became part of my daily routine. So I spent all my free time hunting thanks to this. I became a tracker and learned to see and hear much further, which increases your spotting range by 25%. Pretty good. You'll see why spotting is pretty important in the campaign. Um, I am um, uh, sorry. Next one. I am always trying to find ways to help my workers accomplish their tax tasks more efficiently. Command aura plus 20%. I think this is the best one. Command aura is um, a really big deal for your general. And then I often had to travel on horseback for business because that allowed me to move between cities faster. Own speed plus 20%. I don't think that's as important because you don't really move with an army and you'll see what I mean as we dive on into the game. You also notice as these events happen, these abilities all go up by themselves too. Now this is our first negative. Um, I shut out everyone else, minus three endurance, minus three charisma, minus three endurance, minus three willpower for I constantly worry that I will lose someone else. And then I realize that the worst will always happen, minus ten endurance. I'm going to do the minus three endurance and minus three charisma because as I said, charisma is the stat that I personally don't value the most. So I inspired my soldiers with speeches about their duty, plus 10 willpower, that's the one we're taking. Concentrating, even in peacetime, made my soldiers iron, plus 10 stamina, not bad. My soldiers often spent their time shooting at targets, plus 10 firearms, but that's for, these are all for created units. But I'm going to go with plus 10 willpower. Capturing several French forts, and in spite of some setbacks, we succeeded in driving out the French. My attempts to secure a commission in the army were thwarted by English officers, with little respect for my abilities, so I decided to resign. My next steps were... I married a rich widow and started developing my estate, increasing my holdings five times. Everybody likes a sugar mama, so plus $10,000 sounds pretty good. I was actually involved in local politics and succeeded in increasing my popularity, plus, twi plus 25 reputation. Uh, that could be really good. Reputation is a very important part of this scheme and you can use it to propel yourself forward. And then I did some wilderness exploration and had a lot of contact with Indian tribes, minus 20 tension with natives. Currently in the game, this doesn't seem to be a big deal. I think later on, maybe that'll be important. But right now I'm going to go for the money. I ran for and was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses. In 1774, I was elected as a delegate to the First Continental Congress in Philadelphia. There I helped secure. Privateers to patrol our coasts gives us plus one warship. A recruitment campaign to expand the militia, plus one militia unit from the start. And additional cache of weapons to arm our troops. Now, I don't think any of these are wrong. But how I want to play at the beginning, I want this plus one militia unit. With England have reached a breaking point. In the near future... Confrontation will break out, and I will have to use all my experience to fight for the independence of the colonies. So here we are, Quicksilver Gaming. We get to choose a portrait, and ooh, could uh, choose him. Um, I mean, all of these guys basically look the same. Ancient, old, will be him. He looks uh, 
slightly overweight, um, you know, receding hairline. Uh, you know, that, that probably defines me. And I'm playing on normal. This game is not balanced yet. They did release a patch to take normal down to a more acceptable place if you guys played this before the first patch. Oh my goodness, that was like ultimate difficulty. But we'll play on normal, so it's 10% more recruits, 10% more income, and t uh, negative 10% reputation, negative impacts. Negative is spelt incorrectly there. And I would like to reiterate, this is an early access. There will be bugs, there will be spelling mistakes, there will be errors, there will be optimization problems. This is in super early access. If you guys play this and you see mistakes like this, report it on Discord, use the F11 report button, um, do everything you can to help the developers make this the game you want to play. So, like in this example, I'm taking a screenshot of this and sending it to the Discord and saying, hey, there's a spelling mistake. You know, it's not a big deal, but when you produce a game, obviously you want your spelling to be... Uh, as accurate as possible in in grammar and all of those things that I'm actually terrible at as a youtuber I'm pretty sure I make tons of grammatical mistakes, but uh, let's begin our journey as Quicksilver gaming May our land be a land of liberty a seat of virtue the asylum of the oppressed a name and a praise in the whole earth Joseph Warren. Ooh, I timed that pretty well so arrival, I hired two regiments, one from Pennsylvania and one, for, one from Virginia, to support the Patriot cause. I traveled to Massachusetts with two regiments eager to join the fight against the British. The Patriot Army was in need of reinforcements, and the arrival of the two hired regiments is a welcome sight. I must quickly integrate the new soldiers into battle plans and lead them into action. So we're just going to pause right off the bat. This game throws you in very fast and there's something i want to show you all which is very important now i think you can get to this from the main screen too but there are tutorial videos here that you can click on and they have you know different areas and it'll sort of talk to you about or it'll tell you about various different things in this game because boy is there a lot in this game and I mean a lot. So we are down here. We are Quicksilver Gaming. And you'll notice that this is its not an army. You move your regiments across the battlefield. And it can be a little difficult to get the hang of it first. Uh, you don't exactly move your army. There are ways around this sort of. You could... Uh, click on both of these units and click this join brigade and you can join up to four units into a brigade and it helps move them as one whole force but uh, at the start it's it, it takes some getting used to for sure and your general needs to be nearby units for you to actually engage in a battle your units will sort of auto resolve in real time on the battlefield if your general isn't nearby. Also, my units have some perks. I'm going to go with discipline training, which is plus 10 willpower and plus 5 efficiency. The other option is plus 10 stamina and plus 5 efficiency. I think both are good, but I think willpower is something that is very important early on the game because having your units break is really devastating. Now here at Hartford, we have this militia unit that we uh, received from our pre-game decisions. And I'm going to have them leave the garrison. And you'll see that they have a perk too. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to tell them to move to Providence. And then we're going to have our force move to Providence too. And they do take a little bit weird um, angle on the map. And one thing is, if Gibbs goes out of my line of sight, I don't actually know where he is on the map. I sort of get these 
updates every once in a while of where he might be or what his new status is. Also, at the very beginning, there's not a lot you can do. Everything's sort of locked, and it's uh, hopefully they turn it into a little bit more of a tutorial in the future. Whereas right now, it's... Um, uh, you have to figure out what's going on. I mean, down here, you've got your different controls. And this right here is a scripted event that'll happen no matter what. And this sort of integrates you into, um, or not integrates, this, this brings you into a battle and sort of teaches you the fundamentals of a battle. Although, um, I'd say it's different enough from some of the other combats you'll have, but it, it's a good deep dive into a battle. And it's technically the, uh, First engagement of the American Revolution, Concord and Lexington battle. So Patriots have stored valuable mi uh, military supplies in the small town of Concord. The British must have uh, must have taken notice and now approach with a significant force. Will you help them defend? Um, you can decide not to fight this battle. I think in the future they'll give you an option to not fight the battle and still get the reputation bonus for those people that have played this a million times because this battle is fairly scripted and it's designed for you to win but we'll fight this to show it off i also love the art and imagery of this game too so here's the overall tactical battle map 19th of april 1775 battle of concord and you know arrows on the map all of this you'll notice that the map itself is a lot better than what you used to from ultimate general civil war so the british are attempting to advance to concord and seize patriots stashed weapons and ammo slow roll the map the stashed weapons and ammunition are vital for our cause and must be saved at all costs we have reports that patriots from all near counties are on the way we must slow the British down until they arrive. Good luck, General. Um, now, one thing I hope they do change is that the camera faces the correct direction when it starts. Because right now, it doesn't do that. It's, uh, as you notice, I had to turn the angle around um, these models are beautiful. They're so much better than the Civil War. They do run a little funny, but remember, this is a really small indie company, and this is really nice looking. It has a little bit of a mobile game feel to it in terms of the graphics, but I this is a huge step up from previous ultimate general games now here you see the red coats marching in nice formations we are not doing that you can hear birds in the background um i don't want them charging us so that's uh let's retreat the british like to charge a lot in this game which uh you know that's we could call that fairly historically accurate the the british did charge a lot in this era and um there's many battles where the british took fairly decent casualties because they would just charge fortified positions such as bunker hill where the british took i think it was a thousand casualties out of three thousand total soldiers in the battle now we have more men coming onto the battlefield so we will move them up and right now we are sort of doing a delaying action um actually let's put you guys in the trees over here if the british charge us i do want to retreat out of there I, the british will decimate our militia in a charge they'll probably decimate our militia in uh firefight too but yeah let's let's get them out of here already all right here's a nice big fat regiment let's bring them up and then some more skirmishers go out on the flanks 
have you guys come back a little just as i said a delaying action for the british um uh, we could uh you know have a unit way out over there now condition for your troops goes down really fast i've noticed uh see they're already at 65 percent you do need your troops to rest quite often uh condition is I've noticed troops go zero condition really fast. All right, get out of there. We're sort of just doing a single volley, then then retreating out. We'll put them over here for now. And it does take a while for your troops to take up the fortifications, I think. Um, I might have screwed things up there because I think they were already going into the fortifications but okay you guys could now go into there all right they are in the fortifications they're moving really slow and i don't want them going across like that let's have you guys retreat out and you all could go over here and this is where things get a little difficult because our forces oh they're being charged okay and this is something that happens often the british really like to charge in and that unit is probably going to break um where'd that unit go are they gone oh my okay yeah so the british they uh they're charge happy let's just put it that way let's bring them around i mean they have three units charging that unit not good oh, these guys move really slow i will say um sometimes units move incredibly fast and sometimes they move incredibly slow and when units charge i think they move a little too fast at least for my liking um one thing to note also none of this really matters just uh if you can win then then uh you get the 10 reputation if you lose i don't know if there's any real negative um effects from losing yeah get out of there uh no yeah i should have known better to, than to do that so yeah we're just doing a delaying action right now until our forces really move up um you get tons of reinforcements in this battle you can see like there's there's even more guys coming in you have to hold this armory uh the as i said the brits love to charge there's another charge incoming they're uh they're just uh chargers I, that's the really the only way to put it so let's move these guys up keep moving up and then put you guys in the farmyard over there all right there's a nice fat regiment and then let's uh have a flanking force come round best thing to do with skirmishers is try to flank the enemy as much as possible so that actually worked that they uh they repelled the british there so that's that's pretty good could we get you guys over here maybe move you in we said move you over to the church is that a church no sorry barn we have more reinforcements on the way that send the smaller units to the sides, the large units to the center. 
can see the British are still charging more reinforcements on the way. And we're just sending a bunch of numbers, really, this way. So let's see if we can get those flank attacks going. Um, more large units, more large units. All right, so get you guys moving out. Yep. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of units shattering. Let's get you guys into the fortifications. Uh, that's not good. All right, if we can get some flanking shots. Good thing none of these men actually matter. It's a terrible thing to say about our uh, brothers in arms, but it's unfortunately true. None of this matters. Just winning is really the only thing. All right, looks like we push them back. So we can... Sometimes they... Uh, oh, why did they uh, charge in? I wonder, could we... Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's get you guys moving in, you guys moving in, and let's see if we can recover. Get some flank shots over there. Lots of exhausted men. All right, we managed to do some damage over there. See if we can push them up. Um, looks like we captured some men. That's always good. And continue on this flank. So you'll notice the scale of this battle. The units are fairly small. So the units are companies and they form regiments. And that is the basic scale to this game. Now, I have found out that if you want to charge the British, a 2 to 1 odds is generally good. There is a bonus for outnumbering the enemy. And it's a pretty hefty bonus if I understand the mechanic right. See, we... uh. We immediately captured that unit. Now let's get them to go in there. Um, we captured them. And then we'll probably just do a large attack on... Ooh, there's something... Oh, what's going on? Oh, no, no, that's a routing unit. Okay. Alright, so let's do a charge there, a charge there... Did I not do a charge? And then have these guys move up to over here. Um, we do have some issues over there. This flank isn't going the best either. But... We are holding... We have a nice strong point at this... Uh, at this moment in the battle. And I think we can start really flanking them. Alright, let's move this unit of the best number of soldiers out. Let's have you guys just wipe them out and move up some forces over here. Let's have these... Uh, your condition sucks. Your condition sucks. Your condition's good. And then your guys' condition is terrible. No, 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 don't, don't, uh, they're exhausted. They're flanked? Okay. Let's move these, uh, red coats back over here so they don't accidentally change sides once more. Let's move you guys over. 
And at this point, we're just mopping up. This battle is basically won. We have incredible numbers compared to the enemy. Uh, although some of the small units are definitely struggling, can we... Can we actually shoot Percy? Looks like we did. Or he disappeared or teleported off the battlefield, I'm not quite sure. Move you guys around. Let's have you guys start moving out and let's have you guys start moving out. And uh I think I think this is a uh, going to turn into a route. So usually in the campaign, from what I've noticed, if an army thinks that it is completely overwhelmed, it'll call a general retreat instead of fighting to the last man. So there's three captured lobster back units. And let's have you charge there. And you charge there, and you can go there. Now, one thing I would like is that if you have zero condition, I don't think you should be able to charge. But as you saw there, we just charged into units, and we had zero condition. Let's, uh, let's run on out with our men. And let's just start really ending this battle. You know, the, the British are their two stars, one stars. We are we are just farmers with pitchforks, as uh, Cornwallis says in the I don't know, I think it's a terrible movie, but uh the Patriot. Um but you know, good old uh Mel Gibson, he saves Scotland and then he saves America. So, he likes to fight the British, that's for sure. Alright, I think one last unit and then there's a supply wagon over there. Let's just do the honor. See, they have zero condition and they can run that fast. I, I don't like that. I think that you shouldn't be able to run and you shouldn't be able to charge if your condition is at zero percent. But that's, um, that's just something that I think should change. I will, I, I think people have mentioned it in the Discord. Um, there's a, there's a thread in the Discord that has, you know, suggestions and things like that. Um, these guys are all really small. Can they combine? They can. Cool. And I think that might be it for the battle. I think there's a a supply wagon way out there. Um, I'll try to go out there and find it, but we have done our job. We have secured the... the... oh gosh, what is this called? The magazine. Oh boy. Definitely having some brain fart moments, that is for sure. Alright, finish. Now this finish button is a little sticky or delayed or whatever. Um, I've noticed sometimes it doesn't go as quickly. So here we have it, infantry 3140 versus 1200. <laughs> that was really tough and it just shows how good the British units were there. But we, uh, we won. And that's, that's all that really matters. And unfortunately, they don't do this screen on every battle. I know there's a thread in the Discord that uh, people have mentioned. They would like to see this kind of a screen after every battle in the campaign. But this is the only battle I've seen that shows off that, uh, what would you call it, the, the victory results screen. Um, I will say the loading times are pretty decent in this for early access too. Now that could be the gaming rig that I have, but um, I thought they were pretty good. Uh, I mean, if you guys have seen me play Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, which is developed by Game Labs, who also develops this game, uh, the optimizations are not there and the loading times take 
quite a while. So, glorious victory! We pushed back the British, kept our supplies, and picked up loot from, with the, from the withdrawing enemy. Moreover, we now have a full regiment of militia patriots willing to fight for us. So we gained a thousand civilian muskets, which are the worst muskets in this game. And then we gained a militia regiment, the 84th Continental, 315 men, although I think it can go larger, and there's three companies in this regiment. You can see that by, I don't think I can uh, show or put my cursor over it, but right under 84th Continental, there are three circles with muskets. Those are your sort of basic infantry symbols, so I know that has three companies in here, so... Let's close that. Let's, uh, so Sproul is the unit we just gained, and as you can see, he is gray. But that doesn't mean that you don't control him. What it means is that he is out of line of sight of your commander. So that's the last known position of uh, Spruill. Now over here... We have a battle that's about to begin, and I want Gibbs to move in. And you saw that some gunfire happened there. There's actually an auto-resolve going on in the background. And when this shows up, then you can enter the battle. Now, this is an interesting mechanic that is going to need a lot of development to iron out all the wrinkles. Sometimes this battle button doesn't show up for various reasons. One of them is that the battle is too lopsided. Now, this would be considered a lopsided battle, and I'm pretty sure as soon as I enter the battle, he's going to rout. So, the red box are the troops that are automatically engaged in the battle. The yellow box are units that will be uh, coming on as reinforcements, and... Your troops are deployed basically like this, so Gibbs should be pretty far away from the line when this battle starts. So let's put that uh, theory to the test. Or test that theory. <laughs> Boy. And there we go. You can see that one of our uh, regiments, Gibbs, is way far back. So let's start this battle and... It wouldn't surprise me if it ends right away. And as I said, I really wish they would have the camera angle facing the enemy right off the bat. Now, this is what the battles will look like um, when you play. Yep, see, victorious back to global map. You can see the enemy running away. If you had cavalry, you could chase them down. But there's no way I can chase them down, so we'll just go back to the global map. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, at least it does it pretty quick. Um, it makes sense, though, that the enemy wouldn't fight a battle that there's just no hope in winning. However, I hope on our end that we could defend against battles like that. So we need him to retreat out of there. Um, I also need Sproul to move out. And I want him to have discipline training. And now I need my forces to go down to Newport and take Newport. And looks like there'll be a little skirmish going on. I want my forces to move up a little. You saw we took four casualties right there. And there we go. So I don't know if that means that this unit will be reinforcements. I don't think so. They're in the red box. But let's take this battle. We should be able to win this. Um, I don't want to say fairly easily, but I, I think it should be a fairly convincing battle here. Especially because their regiments are only two units strong, and we let the skirmishing go on a little longer than usual so that our units could move up. Okay, so this is our militia unit, and then this is a bunch of regulars, and then a bunch of regulars pushing up the center, and Quicksilver Gaming moving up. Okay. 
There we go. I was a little confused for a moment. All right, so let's, let's halt with them. Now, I'm told if you halt that the front rink should kneel. Now, I don't know if that is... Oh, okay, well. They decided that uh, our force was too much for them. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's four units to 11, so it makes sense. Um... I don't know. At least they're on the battlefield, so if you had Dragoons, you could charge them. I hope the AI is smart enough to know that if there's Dragoons, that it's better for them to maybe stand and fight instead of fleeing, but... Why am I seeing Dragoons? Is it Dragoons? Dragoons are cavalry that dismount and fire carbines and muskets um so i'm not remembering my uh you know 1700s and 1800s cavalry and units correctly i don't know why sprawl decided to stop what he was doing but we are going to take newport and then we will take providence right after and then we'll see if we can take Middleborough. The Continental Congress commissioned you as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. You were selected over other candidates based on your previous military experience and the hope that a leader from Virginia could help unite the colonies. Seems like Virginia's always uh, a pick part of every war in America. I mean, it makes sense. It's, you know, a fairly centrally located state on the eastern coast, even though it's um, a southern state, technically. Probably angering a lot of southerners by saying technically there, but... Uh, okay, so here we go. This opened up. Now, I wish the game, when they release this does something where it's like big giant glowy box pause the game annoying narrator dude says hey your headquarters just opened up because the first time i played this i didn't notice it and even then i i didn't notice it right off the bat but this is your headquarters and this is sort of where you do your research for lack of a better term so your commander-in-chief can do global projects. And the big part here is you unlock all these other headquarters slots. So I want to unlock the Department of Engineering. And I'm going to assign the department. But I'm going to immediately spend 10 reputation to finish the project immediately. Because I think opening up these headquarters slots is vitally important as it allows you to start unlocking different technologies and different uh, faction bonuses. That's not the correct terminology, but you'll see as the campaign goes on that there are some major buffs that your different headquarters departments um, do. Now up here is your news. And another thing to note, let's uh, see if we can pause the game right here. Supply network. You have all these map modes here. And by taking Newport and Providence, we just opened up a supply network from Harford to Newport to Providence. And that's that green line there. You'll see here that this gray line means that it, I, I think it's not, a complete supply line so there's no supplies going and then the red is obviously the british supply line um i want to take middleborough I'm probably saying that wrong i'm i'm english by descent so i should uh, know how to say these names a little bit better um now i will apologize i am not from the east coast and i have not really ever visited the east coast and to me like the world ends past uh, um, like kansas basically 
Uh, so I'm not as familiar with the East Coast as other people are, but uh, I will try my best to say these. I know like Lester, that's how you say it. That's my dad has grilled that into me um, because there's Leicester Square in England, even though the English like to spell things terribly because there's a there's a C and an E and an S in there, but it's Leicester. So I, I know things like that. But um, anyways, this is a supply network mode. You have your mining, which tells you like the different strategic resources. You have your control map, which just shows uh, control, I guess, and um, the rough amount of soldiers around loyalty is how loyal they are to the different factions. So we have 69% loyalty. So once again, Boston, very nice over there. And then C map mode. I don't necessarily know. I guess this shows you the different ships at sea and how many guns between those ships. So there's two ships with 42 guns total. I'm assuming that is what it is. And then our headquarters, nope, that's not quite done yet. Um, that's fine. Now, I want to push out over here and take this immediately. Uh, okay, engineering department. You can now develop your infrastructure economy and the production of military equipment for your army by using the construction and production tabs. Engineering department research has also unlocked the artillery department research project. Artillery department will allow you to develop heavy range wh dot dot dot. I'm assuming that's supposed to be weapons. The capture of Providence will allow us to take a warehouse of weapons and ammunition necessary for our army. The control of Rhode Island will help us to secure Boston. So we gained 10 reputation. Also, the capture of Newport allows you to expand your influence in Rhode Island. You captured British Navy sh you captured British Navy ship in port. Should be you captured A, I think. Right, guys? Let me know if I'm wrong. So, plus 10 reputation and the USS Obedient. And I'm going to take a screenshot of this real quick, too. Okay, so nice to grab a ship there. Um, it's an unrated cutter, so it has 12 guns, so it's a really small ship. But, um, you know, we could possibly have a Navy later. Another thing you can potentially do is sell it for more cash later. Now, Mill is taking his sweet time. You can see Boston has an absolute giant force here. And I need those guys to push out. You'll just see a bunch of skirmishing going on right here. I don't want our forces getting too wide. Let's have Quicksilver move up a little just so his vision is a little bit better. And this is taking a little bit long. You can right click. Um, so the battle's probably not happening because this is what they would consider an overwhelm, uh, overwhelming victory. So, Massachusetts Patriots. The Massachusetts Patriots have formed a militia unit at Leicester, Massachusetts Bay. They are eager to fight under your command. So, 450 men, three companies, uh, led by Zacchaeus Crane. Zac Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus? I think it's Zacchaeus. Maybe. Um, construct a production building, construct production infrastructure in Hartford. 70 days to do. Reward is 10 reputations. So this is a quest. Um, so let's, uh, let's double click here. They will charge in and they'll break. Yeah. Because it's overwhelming odds. Now hopefully we shoot them on the way out and then we'll capture this town. Uh, okay, good. Wanted to make sure they, they left. So I'm going to send our better units back to Providence. And then this guy will stay at Middleborough. And Gibbs will stay there too. And Quicksilver Gaming is going to sort of be out here. Um, 
you only have a line of sight from your generals. Now here's a bad thing, British reinforcements. Enemy reinforcements are coming in Boston. The British send additional units using their powerful fleet, 720 men. Now, I just realized um, this went on for a little bit too long. I am not doing a project tree, and I need the quartermaster department, and I want to spend seven reputation to make it be immediate, because the faster we unlock these, the better. And here, you have to assign a commander to it. Now, the commander you assign, it'll highlight the abilities that are needed for this assignment. So I could put Jay Richardson here, but he's just good at everything. I'm thinking I might put Trevor Knoll there. He has a 28 in willpower and a 15 in intelligence. So the 15's bad, but I think, uh, I mean, we could put Samson Byrne. I just, I don't want to put that good of a commander as the chief engineer. So let's put, uh, let's put Trevor Noel. Noel? Noel. I think it's Noel. And here, we can build six factories, or utilize six factories. And I'm going to do all six. Now that'll cost 180 gold. I don't know if, I think that's per month. Uh, here's your income don't really know i think it's 180 per month potentially and this will really help us with building muskets ammunition wagons cannons ships all of that the more factories you have the more you can build things like that now you click on this projects tree and you have a research tree and this is specific to the chief engineer. Now you have to start at Engineers of the Revolution, which is plus two and a half research speed, but there's things like qualified engineers, plus five research speed, new buildings, fur factory, rum factory, cigar factory. Um, there's things like new musket, U states, a uh, typical composite per, pro, uh, p wow. A typical composite piece produced by domestic gunsmiths using British and American components. The butt of this weapon is boldly marked U States to designate public ownership and to deter theft of government property. Yeah, it sounds like the government. A new musket, Virginia 76. So there's a lot that you can build in here. I think there's, yeah, Pennsylvania rifle, brown besses, Spanish 55s. All sorts of cool stuff. Um, every single department has their own research, tr research tree, which absolutely blows my mind that there is that much depth to this game. Um, but yeah, we are, we're going to push these forces over here. Now I have a unit up at Portsmouth and I'm really tempted to get rid of them. I don't think I have a ship at Portsmouth. Uh, by getting rid of them, I, well, no, there's no point getting rid of them right now. If I see Portsmouth is being attacked, I'll probably disband them to get the officer and the men. But let's uh, continue this, and these guys, I want to join the garrison. When they join the garrison, they'll be able to replenish their forces. Over here, when they get in range, I want them to join the garrison too. Joining the garrison is the only way your soldiers will replenish um, soldiers that they have lost in battle. Which I think is a pretty cool way of doing it. It makes a lot of sense. Now, um, we do have this quest. And how you go... And complete this quest I find it's a little vague but it says construct production infrastructure in Hartford now if you go to your construction management there is this thing here production and this is production infrastructure so you click this button then click Hartford 
and Hartford will start producing or trying to complete a production infrastructure. That took me a little while to figure out when I first went through the game. Um, there's all sorts of different infrastructures that you can develop in your different territories, and this is how you do so. Now, they are pretty expensive. 1,600 gold and 40... Is this bricks? Material caught report. I think it's technically bricks or clay or something like that. But um, you can see we have 64.2 left. This is one of the most basic building materials you need. You need a lot of it. Now, if you go into your production, we just built those six factories or converted, you know, uh, local farmsteads into factories. And we need to start creating weapons and ammunition. So we are going to create muskets, three pound galloper guns, and not ships, ammunition. Now I'm going to put ammunition as the highest priority. Um, the galloper gun, maybe... Oh, we haven't unlocked the market yet. But I think uh, what we will do is... So, oops, hit the wrong button. The green means you have factories to do it, and the red means you don't have factories to do that. So... If we want, say, three factories working on ammunition, we need to go down to three. Now that puts three factories working on civilian muskets, but let's move it down to two. And then the three pound pounder galloper gun, we will have down to one. What I could do... No, um, I think you could move these around and say like you develop more factories and you want it to go directly into ammunition. You could put ammunition at the bottom and do something like that. I think that would work. Yeah, I think I think that's how it would work. Um, and it tells you how much it costs to do all of this and the resources you have. Uh, Copper is one of the harder things to obtain right now. I think once the map opens up a little bit more, there are some places with copper. The map is much larger than this. This is just the starting part of the map. And then phase two will open up further. And then, as far as I understand it, um, almost like all of the 13 colonies are in this map can or campaign map. And I think part of Canada too. Um, so it'll it'll be a pretty awesome large map. There's the 720 men coming to Boston. You can see that Boston greatly outnumbers us. Um, let's have this move along so our quartermaster department can unlock. And once that unlocks, I will show you um, what we can do there. And then that'll probably be the end of this first episode. You can now organize the quartermaster department for an advancing support of your army. Market and storage are also open, allowing the trade of equipment, goods, and resources. Construct recruiting house in Fart Hartford. 32 days, 5 reputation reward. So if we go down to Hartford here, we can uh, start the recruiting house. One thing I haven't done yet, and it's recommended by everybody... Is that you put a schoolhouse in every city it helps with your officer points and that's important to so that your officers are a little bit better when you recruit them um really helps out so we'll just do the schoolhouse you see we had plenty of money to do all of that hartford is doing their thing over here. Quicksilver Gaming is right there. Let's go to headquarters, assign a new project to our commander in chief, and let's spend our reputation to fast track it. I hope you guys see why fast tracking the departments is important because you open up these departments and the respective trees. So, like here. 
we can unlock a wagon. Wagons are important for building supply chain. Um, we do need to assign somebody to this. So we could put Samson Byrne. No, no, no. Let's put Bantam Fitzpatrick. Yeah, let's do that. Is there anybody better than you that we can put here now? Samson Byrne. He's better. Is he about to level, though? Maybe. I think that's what that means. Um, yeah, let's keep him there. So, Forge Payment. I don't fully understand this yet, but Unit can pay for Forge or Loot Provisions. Looting will affect Loyalty, so your Units can sort of Forge the land, I think, for Provisions. Um, we're not going to do that yet. You'll get these where you could refill your copper. I think once a week there's an officer recruitment. I highly recommend doing the officer recruitment. Um, you need officers badly. But if we now hit play, our army size should increase, I think, the quartermaster chief. Um... I could be, uh, yep, there we go. Okay, so this is because we now have a uh, quartermaster chief. So you can increase your army size by constructing military infrastructure in regions and recruiting buildings in settlements. Max units can be increased by researching projects or by events. Um, and quarter uh, up at the top, quartermaster department bonus is plus 19.4. So our max units count is 19, which is pretty big because we're stuck at 5 and we're never going to beat 4,416 <laughs> redcoats with that few men. Now you can edit your units, but it doesn't look like we can add any more to those guys or these guys. And I don't think we can add any more to them. But at Hartford, we could create a militia regiment. And this militia regiment, we have to assign a commander. We'll do Jay Richardson. And then we can do their skirmishers, their militia. We could do... We want artillery yet. Kind of want some skirmishers. So if we add two regular militia and two skirmishing militia, we don't have enough men. Just realize that. Three hundred, four hundred. Will it let us do that? Oh, you can only add one skirmisher. Interesting. All right, let's add the artillery. Okay, so we can do it. It'll probably require more recruits. I don't know if we have a gun, but let's, uh, let's start building this out. So it's two regular militia units and a skirmisher and an artillery regiment hit create it'll give you a red flag not enough ammunition not enough provision those are things we can fix um if it said not enough guns we could go to the market and buy more guns um there's not a lot on the market short brown besses read it carefully does say used only by dragoons which are cavalry um, civilian musket you can see not very good compared to everything else we do want to upgrade our weapons in the future we can buy cannons we have a bunch in storage we could buy ships if we wanted to really expensive but you know pretty good we could buy ammunition we could buy wagons we could buy furs and you can also sell so we have two furs we could sell these if we want for a thousand gold pretty good if you're in a uh, in a bind for money now 
I don't recommend selling everything right away because there are things that pop up like the Native Americans want to trade with you and it's uh, it's pretty beneficial to do so. But I just realized I need another unit at Leicester. So if we receive any more units, ooh, let's see if, well, we'll see in a future episode if Portsmouth um, stays might need to get rid of it but generally if you have roughly a thousand men in a city the british are a little timid and don't attack it for a while what i want to do is have about a thousand men here a thousand men here and then my main force here and see if i can bait out some units from boston and see if we can slowly whittle away their army oh they have cav Ugh. cavalry is devastating in this game um but i think that shows you a sort of first impression of the game i will continue this i don't know how long this will be because it isn't early access but there might be a slight pause in my civil war videos or maybe they will be reduced a little bit as this is obviously a new game get it out to you guys show it off to all of you and i hope you guys enjoy it so Oh, before we go, there's a colony management tab. And here, you can assign doctrines to your states. Now, what this does is various bonuses to the states that you control. So, like, for example, Connecticut, which is Hartford, um, we could do a mining doctrine, and it gives us extra of these two resources which i think is like iron and lumber we could pay 869 gold for a construction doctrine which will boost this economy boost this colony with faster construction times not a bad idea um propaganda if you have loyalty issues you can gain some propaganda provisions uh not a terrible thing provision doctrine will boost the provisions of this colony could be a good thing to do because we're using that colony to recruit our troops and they need provisions um and then training doctrine will boost the quality level of local units in this colony uh might be better for like providence or something like that um We'll probably just do something like boosting boosting our provisions because it doesn't cost anything. Rhode Island will do... I kind of need this saltpeter for ammunition, so we'll do that. And then New Hampshire, um, we could do... I think we will do mining. For the point two and point two there now there's also this developer like how would you phrase this uh you can direct the control of your colonies if you want to let the ai develop them for you i have not done this uh i tried it once and i i think i want to take control of the colonies myself and build them up how i want to build them this is great if you don't want to do a lot of this colony management because you could say like Hartford just do army development and um, uh, Rhode Island you could do production development and uh, you know somebody could do supply maybe like when we take Boston they could be supply development or something like that. So just some things to think out and then it shows you these are all the different colonies that are in the game we don't control them yet and then here's some different factions i don't exactly understand how they work but i think that's spain england uh the united states one of them should be france i thought these might be native american colony or um native american tribes not quite sure but uh, I think that is where we will end today's episode. We've gone through a lot of the first part of the game. This is a fairly lengthy episode too. The next time I will see you guys in this game, we will develop our army, develop our colony, 
and try to engage in some, you know, guerrilla warfare, some uh, Mel Gibson-esque patriot warfare with the dreaded Cornwallis and, yeah, the British. I, I really don't like that movie. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to bait out the troops at Boston and see if we can get some favorable combats and continue developing our departments and continue developing our army. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please like, comment, subscribe. Check out the the Discord. Um, there are some amazing people on there. Shout out to Panda Kraut, who is a modder of the various Ultimate General games, and he has been answering questions left or right. Absolutely amazing guy. There are plenty of testers on there. There's a developer, Sterner, on there. Um, really, really helpful Discord nice place to go so as always guys until next time